Welcome to It's All Fine and Dangy, where we talk about community, health, culture, and all of the big and little things that make life good. Here are your hosts, Dan and Angie. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 67 of the It's All Fine and Dangy podcast with your host, Dan and Angie. With your host with the most. Your hostesses. No, that's female. Hostesses. Hosts. Your hosts. And <laughs> I was you know, trying to say the plural version. I, I never know anymore. It's like it used to be, I think people would say actress and now they say actor for everyone. So I don't know. I think it works. It's interchangeable yeah. for me. Host, plural. That's what hosts. I Hosts. 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 <laughs> it's like you don't get that S in the end though. That's no. why I wanted to say like hostesses. It is but hard to say. Right. It is hard to say. So anyway, welcome welcome to the show, guys. We uh, are not doing a Facebook Live this week, and um, you know it's just been really crazy. Today's show, this week's show, I should say, is going to be mostly light and breezy, I guess. We're going to stay on uh, some light topics. We don't have a guest this week, but we are taking a break from Facebook Live for a little while while we regroup, and we want to make sure Mm -hmm. that the live shows that we do are very interactive for you guys and honestly, with the home renovation and everything that we have going on that everyone's probably tired of hearing about, it's just uh, it's a good time for us to take a little bit of a break from Facebook Live, but we will yeah. go back to doing it. Mm-hmm. We will, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I think we'll be doing Skype calls with our interviews, you know, with the upcoming interviews that we have for um, rest of June and July. Um, we'll probably be doing those for a little while, but I'm very excited to get back in the field. Oh my as goodness. You may say, I so am too. And get people in our studio, signing our little studio wall and just that fun kind of interaction with our guests. Oh, so, yeah. but we do have some great guests lined up. So, um, we are excited for those who will be coming on the show within the next, um, month or so. And, um, but it's just us today. Well, that's okay. It's we good. are our own guests today. We so, are. Hey, but we like to talk to each other. So yes, there we, we do. go. <laughs> and and this kind of reminds me of uh, when the podcast was first getting going. We did, I think, we more often did shows without guests. Yeah, and uh, so it's kind of yeah. cool sometimes. Yeah, we have some videos of us like in our little tiny studio that was in our bedroom. That was pretty cool. There's like throwback videos. That that's what we should have put up tonight. Like a throwback, a bunch of throwback video throwback videos. of us sitting at our tiny little little podcast station, well, which course, was really cool. Did we do um videos of those though? I don't remember. We did doing... we did some Facebook lives. Oh we did we I did remember early setting on. Up, I mm-hmm. set up triple cameras and had it cut between different angles and yeah. stuff. That was fun. Yeah, you might have to experiment with that again. Anyway, we just wanted to see how everybody is doing tonight, how everybody's holding up because things are still not, well, we call it the new normal now, but things aren't back to like what our normal life is. Yes. And, um, and yeah, I know we all get kind of tired of maybe talking about it sometimes, but it's still out there. It's still a thing. COVID-19, it's still affecting our community. And uh, we just want to see how everybody's doing. We're Doing okay on our end here. Oh, yeah. Still staying safe and um, helping to protect others by wearing our masks when we go out. We are doing that. You know, being as diligent as we can with that. So um, we just want to see how you guys are doing. And hopefully everybody is doing well and staying healthy. And nobody in your, you know, family or circle has been affected by this thing as far as the actual disease. Yeah, I know. I know the numbers are up and I, you know, there's a running debate. I don't want to get into the debate. We are Matt. We are supporters of the mask and trying to cut down on the thing. But we do keep asking you guys how you're doing with the virus. I know we've done a couple shows about uh, the virus and I think at least one where we kind of really dedicated some time to talk about it. But I was thinking about this the other night. This whole staying at home thing, it's it's really sort of a, a psychological challenge for a lot of people. And I think Yeah. It, I think it's easier, you know, for if you have like a big family and you're at home mm-hmm. with the family, but if you're not, I could see it being more challenging. Yeah. I don't know. It might be pretty psychologically challenging for those parents who maybe have a lot of children. Oh, need a break. <laughs> That's a good point. So it may be a little bit challenging for them as well. Um, but you know what I thought about, you know, we wear a mask when we go out. And the other day when I was, um, I was out, I thought I'm, I was going to take a picture of myself with a mask and say, 
Wearing is caring. Oh, that's a good because one. Because it's not really about you. No. You know what I mean? No, like, not at all. Like I tell, um, I have the conversation all the time. I'm not really too worried about myself. I'm not worried about because myself Because I feel like my body will do what it needs to do to fight a, a virus. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that is the natural order of things. Sure. But I do wear the mask to protect others that even if they're making the decision to go outside without the mask, I feel like I don't want that weight on my shoulders of, of thinking I might have been exposed to somebody and then I might have passed it along to them. Absolutely. You know, agree. And, and, you know, and I, I will say that, you know, have I been in contact with people that, you know, neither of us are wearing a mask? Yes. But you do try to keep a little bit of a distance. Yeah. And, that six feet um, thing. So yeah, that you you it's kind of really hard not to sometimes. Yeah. Um but you're still being careful with who you're, you know, around. Right, but I totally agree. And I think Wearing is caring. That's yeah, going like to be my it. hashtag. Yeah, hashtag get it trending. <laughs> that would be awesome. I th- but you raise a very very interesting point because I don't wear a mask for myself either. I I am this is going to sound weird, but I'm either convinced that we may have already had it because we went through a little stint the early on where we were around mm-hmm. people who were sick and then we didn't feel great yeah. for a week. But I'm not I, I'm not wearing the mask for that. I'm wearing it just like you said to protect the other people that are at higher risk. Yeah. And I guess in my mind, I feel like if some data comes out later and they're like, oh, you didn't need to wear the mask. Okay, cool. No harm, no foul. But if it's continues to be confirmed that you really needed to wear the mask and yeah. you didn't oof that's bad so yeah. so to me it's a small gesture and uh, i mean really technically i believe that when flu season's here that we should be wearing a mask around people that might be more susceptible to and it and maybe you that'll know? set the stage for that yeah, yeah i'm totally fine with doing that. that's a minor you know, inconvenience there has to be a balance with it though you yeah. know because wearing a mask all the time can have negative benefits you know what i mean you negative you, benefits well you need to breathe fresh you know what i mean like oh, you yeah. have to be a exposed. benefit is good that's why you threw me off oh yeah sorry well it, you know if you wore a mask constantly all day you're breathing in your own breath there's you sure. know carbon dioxide that comes out it smells, you're breathing like it back in. Yeah. It smells like cheese right got it <laughs> i mean if it smells like cheesecake it's probably okay right <laughs> huh, huh, huh. oh we've been good but um you know there's benefits to breathing fresh air and when you're at the beach and breathe in the beach air you know what I mean? Sure. So don't get me started on that whole thing. Because oh, yeah, I'll yeah. go the whole hippy dippy route. But, um, you know, I definitely think there is some benefit. There, There's a lot of benefit to wearing a mask when there is those peak flu seasons and stuff. Oh, like yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. And you know what? All these years, we have seen some people doing that. I have seen people in yeah. masks, just not as many. And, I, and historically, I remember thinking, Oh, I wonder if they're sick. And now cancer I'm cancer or weakened immune system. We, yeah, weakened immune like system. Yep, yep. Exactly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Indeed. Yeah. And you know, the other thing is um, you talked about like the psychology of how this is affecting people. Right. Really, probably kids are being really affected by this oh, because yeah. of the, you know, inner. Even if they're not very social outside of school, at least at school they get that socialization. You know what I mean? Oh, now yes. it's, you know, now they're. And they're on their phones a lot and stuff too. So you would think that, oh, well, they're fine. Yeah. But really, no, they yeah. really still need that interaction. So I think with kids, it's probably parents are probably spending a lot of time trying to entertain the Hopefully. little ones. Hopefully. And, um, you know, no extracurricular activities for them. They can't go sleep over, have birthday parties. So there's just those yeah, things they're looking part. forward to. Yeah. And hopefully they'll be able to get back to that soon if we all just, you know, stay yeah. diligent. Well, I mean, again, you raise a great point because for uh, I feel I guess I feel like that it, adults can manage, maybe especially couples or people with roommates or situations where you live in a place with peep with other people. I feel like for kids, especially if you're like maybe an only child. Mm. it's it's a whole different, or the only child left at home, I feel like it's a whole different thing because you can hang out with the adults and with your parents, but it's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same as it is for us because we have other grown-up human contact. Mm-hmm. So I, I agree with you. I, I, I uh, My heart goes out to the kids because I can't imagine being you know, a teenager or younger and having had to go through this and not have any contact with my friends. And I'll tell you, they probably are starting to go a little stir crazy now, but if this would have happened to us when we were kids, we literally would have gone crazy in one day. Like seriously. Because there was no like internet. Well, we wanted to be outside all the time. Like we were outside all the time. That was our entertainment. So I swear 
our parents would have killed us after but, a day. <laughs> you know what, though? I, I, I think that's where I disagree because we would have done that still. We just wouldn't have been able to get together. We, truthfully, we would have we went outside. We could have gone out by ourselves. We would have gone outside. It was no fun by yourself. <laughs> we would have probably gone outside and then tried to stay by ourselves and then ended up hanging out with our friends yeah. and then potentially getting everybody sick. And then told the parents, oh, no, I was all by myself. All by myself yeah, all day. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, but, you know what, though? When I was a kid, I, I you said, oh, we'd be dying to get outside. But there were times in my childhood, like... We had an Atari and we had a Nintendo. I could have stayed. I could have stayed occupied for maybe a solid week or two without going nuts, and then I would have started going oh, nuts. Oh yeah, yeah. We didn't um, really have. We I think we had an Atari at one point, but we weren't allowed to play it very much. It yeah. was like, you yeah, know, we weren't allowed to play yeah. it all the time. But I think we would have been if we were stuck if inside. If you're stuck inside, because then parents are like, oh yeah, anything to entertain Stay busy. you, <laughs> right? I'm telling you. Well, speaking of getting outside, that is I, a lot of people have been doing that. Yeah, I think I read something or heard something on the radio today when I was driving um, that people are getting outside there, you know, in their yard. Oh yes, a lot of people are doing fixing up stuff. I think it was like sixty-seven percent of people have started some type of home project or fixing up the house or the yard or something like that. That's, so that, that would make was, sense. You know what I noticed? That's too. a high percentage of people. And if you even just drive around our neighborhood, there's so many older houses yeah. that have been painted, Restored, new, um, yeah. yeah, new lawns put in, or they're just, re- people are really sprucing up. So I think that's a S- So a you're good saying thing this the- whole virus thing was launched by the home improvement stores. <laughs> And it might have been because <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, if you go in one of those stores, they're oh, have we packed as ever? Have we not been to Home Depot almost oh, every day? Yeah, almost what, every day. Dan said he's going to start a um, oh, Home Uber. Depot Uber. Just Uber. To... anybody need to go to Home Depot? I'm going. <laughs> Depot. So you're on the way. Because yeah, we've yeah we've had some um, some Mishaps? unfortunate oh, yeah. luck with some of lighting fixtures. We have. You know, there's always something. It's coming you together. You just though. gotta laugh about it. You know. Yes, we did. We did have a really, really good electrician come and do some work for us, and I'll talk about that a little bit. Oh more, yes, yes. A little bit later, but um, so you know, my favorite part about this second stage of renovation. What's that? Is it we're calling people to come and do stuff? <laughs> oh, we learned. We learned. <laughs> we are calling people to come and give us some estimates. And I'm getting at least three estimates from each thing that I need. Yep. And then we will go from there. Love it. So I that's never, my favorite part. I don't want to do any of that stuff anymore. I want to build I websites do or do my day stuff. job. And I wanna, do, now, the yard stuff, you know, I have been out in the yard a lot. Yes, you I've have. I've been helping other people with their yards. Yes. I like being outside. And I think that that is kind of a... Um, a com, com, <laughs> I'm trying to say the word accumulation. Is that right? I don't, accumulated. Hear, okay. Hear. It's like accumulated from me sitting around from the surgery for so long. Oh, yes. And then the um, COVID-19 f- is still following that. So where we're still kind of on lockdown out. a little bit. And I just want to be outside working. Sure. I get you know? that totally. So I have been in our yard really... Um, cleaning some stuff up. Yes, You've been you out there have. helping me. I have. Oh, I did like when you can from your regular and, job and pressure washing. Well, yes. You know, I took vacation, and of the entire two weeks I took, I think maybe two or three days we actually did something like recreational. Yes. The we rest did, of the time it was we work. We did get to go kayaking. So that was fun. That was the first time I had been kayaking since my surgery on March sixth. Yep. So I was very excited about that. Only thing I was not excited about is the fact that it was a Wednesday, people, a Wednesday. I thought, yes, there's going to be nobody on the river. I'm so excited. It's going to be like me and Dan and nature and my zen and my peace. And there was so many people. Yes, it was. It was more crowded than it normally is on the weekends when we go. And I think that goes back to what you're saying about like people working in their yard either that's people that are out of work or, you know, we got to remember it's also summer. So people are coming on vacation as well. Well, it's also kids aren't in school. And so that was a, we did see a lot of young people too. Um, But between that, and then you mentioned the uh, home improvement everyone's doing. I also wanted to say, you know how like at Home Depot, when you look at the push mowers from the gas power through the electrical, Mm -hmm. I think there's like 
five or six models, maybe seven models. And then underneath the display model, there are boxes of them. Well, I noticed the other day, almost all of the boxes were gone. They had like three mowers total in stock besides the I four models. I know that is just crazy. And I was like, what is well, going on? Well, even like on? chainsaws, like the little, Oh, we were having you know, trouble finding those chainsaws, too. Chainsaws, I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah, well, but the river was beautiful when yeah. we went on. We um, I went we went to a new part. We went up to Emerald Emerald Cut, I think it's Emerald called. Emerald Cut. Yeah, and we've never been up that way, but it was upstream. It was gorgeous. It reminded me of Juniper a lot. Yes, I love Juniper so much. It was upstream though, and for your first time out after a while, that's always a nice little workout. Whenever you go oh, it upstream. was it was a nice and yeah. and I. Forgot to put sunblock on my shoulders. Yes, so you got a little toasty. And in the history of my life as a Floridian, <laughs> I have never been as burned as I was this time. And I think it was because we spent so much time in the yard. It's so rep- It was repetitive. But I was yeah. like blistered, and yeah. so it's uh, yeah. yeah. So so use, use sunblock. sunblock <laughs> and there's a really great place in Winter Garden. It's called Wildflower by Jessica. And they sell all natural, um, you know, um, skincare. Yep. I love that place. Is that the stuff you give me with the zinc yes. in it? Yeah, So they have good. an awesome sunblock. Now, it's only SPF 15, but you know by using it, it's got zinc in it. And yeah. it's got some different oils and stuff in it that are, you know, help to kind of protect the skin. And it keeps the sun off when you put it on. Yeah. I mean, if you put it on <laughs> thick and just have that yeah. white stuff, you know, smeared on you, it works really It's like really when good. you were a kid. Remember the white stuff that you used to put, you know, the oh, lifeguards yeah. always had on the nose oh, yeah. and then they made them in colors, which I'm sure. sure when you add those, you know, dyes to it, it's not really good for not your good skin. For you anymore. But the zinc is good. Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, we, the other thing I did is I went to the beach with Rachel, which was really fun. But this was the first time I could also recall I was so burned by the time we went to the beach that I pulled the umbrella, huge umbrella, really far down over me. So I was like almost sticking up in the umbrella and I had my legs covered with a towel and I got <laughs> zero sun, but it was really fun. We laid out on the beach and it was yeah. peaceful and it was just, yeah. I was reading. Sometimes and, it's nice to just sit in the shade at the beach and you do have that little bit of a breeze coming off and the, and and the waves. It's just and, so relaxing there. And then the rain hit. Yeah. And we did the mad dash back to the car. <laughs> and as soon as we got back to the car with everything loaded and we're trying to oh, dry off, always, it stopped raining. That's how it always happens. Yeah. Every single time. Every single time. It was really fun, time. though. It was a fun thing to do. You know what? So we, everybody knows we're still in these home renovations. But after the renovations are done and everything kind of goes back where we can start gathering with family and friends, we're going to start a family game night. Yes, that you, you like keep once a that. month or once every other month, whenever the older kids can kind of come and yeah. get together with us, yep. you know, we'll plan it out two months ahead so that everybody can actually save that'll be that fun. date. That'll be really fun. I'll probably have a grandbaby by then. Yeah. So the ba- so that'll be baby time. See? Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Well, I don't know how you can do family game night with, uh, with yeah. baby duty, but who knows? Yeah. Maybe so. I, I just don't. I think Monopoly will be the game we're not playing. Oh, though. come on. Just Monopoly. But when you have larger groups of people, oh, things like not, charades yeah. and yeah, Trivial Monopoly Pursuit doesn't. and interactive games are the ones that are fun to play. Pictionary. That's with, very like, true. We could get one of the big post it, Dictionary, yeah. One of the big post-it boards. Yeah. Or a, probably a dry erase, so we're saving paper. But a big dry erase That'd board with different colors and stuff, that would be fun. I love that game. Yeah. And these are also good ideas for what to do now when you're stuck home. You know, we, we talked about this a little bit more, uh, or a little bit prior in our other show, mm-hmm. but what can you do when you're stuck at home? Board game nights ago. I get why people don't like Monopoly. The thing about Monopoly it's, is when you're losing, it is a slow death for the next hour and a half instead of just being able to fold out. And so when I was younger, we used to play Monopoly where um, in the center, anytime you would land on like um, where you had to pay taxes or anytime you had to pay money to the bank, it went in the center of the board. And when you landed on free parking, you got the money in the middle and it started with like $500. Like you spent, stuck $500 in there. So if somebody is like, has no money, they could win like thousands of dollars and come back in the game. But yes, you're right. It can make it last forever. Yeah. I was going to (laughs) say, or what if it's like the person that's winning that lands on it? Sorry guys. My, in the video, if you're watching me, these headphones hurt my ears. Do they now? 
Well, it's like it hurts my dr- eardrum. It's weird. That is weird. What? I know. Yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> well, anyway, so I highly recommend not doing puzzles either, especially if they're, uh, you know, been uh, opened already. Oh, whatever. Because <laughs> Rachel Please. and I did like a 2,000 piece puzzle and there were three pieces missing at the end. So it was, yes. a, it was a disappointment. But and video games are also a good thing to do with your family. Yes. And speaking of which... We, uh, Jacob and Rachel were together here this past weekend for Father's Day. That's right. And we sat down and played. We haven't done that in ages. We sat down and played some old school Mario games and Mario Brothers, and it was really fun. You got your special, um, request for breakfast made. I did. You made me an amazing breakfast. I appreciate that. The French toast. You're that welcome. was great. Well, everybody you enjoyed it. that. Well, thank you. And of course, everybody is c- catching. Everybody is just constantly watching the Netflix shows. And now I'm on like the HBO that we have now. Is it HBO Go or now? HBO, uh, HBO now. Max. Oh, Max. That's yes. what we have. You have friends back from that. I have friends back. So I have my sleep show back. But um, one of the shows I've been watching is The Politician. That's the name of that show. So I binged watch that when I was at um, Kim and Martin's dog sitting one time. Right. And at night I would just, you know, was binge watching it and it is hilarious. That's the game that you play and, while I'm on my iPad. Yes. <laughs> I binge watch TVs and I love Pose. I love um, Legendary. You have it's all these shows. Ballroom. I yeah, literally I don't watch it. TV. I don't know why I want a big TV, but... I know, you really do I want, want a it for big movies. TV. I want it yeah. for movies. And speaking of which, we watched the Harry Potter movies, all 47 of them. <laughs> or however It was many. a lot of movies. It was it a was, lot I of movies. I see why the kids really loved those movies because... I do too. They grew up with them. I do too. So it's and different coming from an adult yeah. watching all eight or nine of them because we're critiquing... Yeah. But kids weren't doing that. They were and, growing up with these characters. And honestly, I liked the movies, especially maybe the last three. I just felt like, you know, and again, I never won. I, the, J.K. Rowling has the greatest success story, and I'm and I'm so happy for her. And the, the success of the parks and the books and the movies, and it's great. And I was excited to watch them after all these years because I just never got around to it. But I, it just felt very repetitive for me. And maybe it's one of those things like Breaking Bad where... It, when you watch it back to back, maybe it's not the same as having to wait a while in between mm-hmm. the movies. Or maybe you're right. Maybe it's people grew up with the movies. Like the last one was pretty good to me. Like I was I was really interested in it. But I feel like I could have watched maybe two of them and, yeah. and really stayed. Yeah. I was starting to drift after all that it's time. It's like but. how people were when like Twilight came out and they kind of grew up with those the, characters. Yes, you exactly. Know. I'm trying to think if there was any movies like that when we were little. Star Wars. Star Wars, yeah. yeah. I think that was about it, though. That was about it, and I only ever saw the first one as a kid, so I never got oh. into those episodic movie kind of okay. things, you know? Okay. I don't yeah. think. I'm trying to remember. I mean, there were TV shows that were episodic that we watched, yeah. like G.I. Joe and stuff like that, but I don't remember movies. Oh, Back to the Future. Back to the oh, Future. Oh, Back to the Future. Was you know what? My favorite. Amazing. I, now, this wasn't as a kid, but as an adult, I have a favorite episode trilogy hunger games easy Hun- hunger games that's yes. your favorite books too yes and so i've read the books many times but you got me the ballad of songbirds and snakes yep and it was amazing and you burned I read through it, it in, in two days two days yes it was exactly what i it was more than what i was um thinking it would have been but it the spin that she took on it, woo! Well, that was yeah. A, I don't want to give it away because I don't know. Some people haven't read it if they're if they are fans. But those were prequels, or that's a prequel. It's a prequel. I can't prequel. say prequel now for some. It is a prequel. prequel. Yes. So it is all about. It's basically about the story of the pre, of President Snow, his nice. beginnings. Mm-hmm. And that's all I'm going to say, because oh, it nice. is really what she did in that book is. Um, uh, I, yeah, I don't want to say much more. I'm not going to say much more. Anyway, she she told a very good story about President Snow. All right. Well, I'll be looking forward to watching the movie with you. Yes. You don't want to read the book? <laughs> uh, well, you know what it is. I when if I have time to read, I feel like I should be writing, as we mm. as you hear me say often. Mm-hmm. And speaking of which, and I don't know why my notes are weirding out on you, me. You you have done some writing. I have done some writing, and I also wanted to mention my books. 
Yes, you because should. That's what you're, the you're podcast talking about is for. Reading the book. Well, it's not normally I mean, what it's supposed not. to be for. And, and I've yeah, said, but re- we could talk about that. I've said repeatedly that I don't want to use it for plugging, but I'm going to plug tonight because yeah. I do have two novels. If you're not familiar with them, I write under my full name, Daniel Fox, and. I have a book called In the Dark, and I have a book called Lies That Bind. That's my latest novel. I am working on a three-part series now. I'm probably eh, maybe an eighth of a way through the first of those three books. Yeah. Um, and it's been a little slower writing because of how busy we are, but I am thrilled uh, to, to continue the story, and I'm genuinely excited for everybody to read it. I, I, feel I get like, to read it, some of it soon, yeah, right? Yeah, oh, I want Chapter, you to read it soon. How many chapters in did you I say am, you want me to read? I would like for you to read maybe the first four right now okay. and let me know how it goes. But for the books that I do have, the first book that I have written is called In the Dark, and I was going to have this ready, but I don't have it ready, so I'm going to reach over no. here, and I'm going to grab a copy of it. Why not? From up here and read the back of In the Dark. So, what would you do if you couldn't remember your own life? If all you had were fragmented and foggy memories that seemed out of place? That's how I'm learning to live. I catch myself questioning everything and everyone. Every person is a stranger, even my own wife and our son. Just when I think I'll go mad from this, I get glimpses. Visions of events and people that sometimes seem familiar, but other times these apparitions are otherworldly and threatening. Are these visions just a result of the accident? Senseless chatter from my damaged brain? Or are they echoes of my real memories? With every day that passes, I get a growing feeling that something isn't right. The darkness in my mind plays tricks on me as if intentionally. Am I grasping at straws as I lose my mind? Or is there something more sinister happening? Things are getting worse now, and it's a race against time to find out the truth, lest I end up living the rest of my life like this, lost in the dark. Your voice changes when you read your blurbs. <laughs> Does it? It gets like really deep and <laughs> sultry. I like it. Oh, nice, nice. All right. Well, I'm going to read this other one. Can I read that one? I would love that. All right. Let's see if I can see it. Okay. Let's all right, ready? Let's see if I do as good All as right. you did. I'm not going to get the deep voice like this, though. <laughs> I'm just going to do Angie okay. voice. Okay. This one's Lies That Bind, my newest novel, right? Lies That Bind yeah. by Daniel Fox. Running, lying, pretending. All of my life, that's all I have ever known. It's how my family has survived. In those small spaces between the mundane day-to-day tasks, that's where most people make real connections with each other. Or so I've heard. I'm not allowed to make those connections. I'm not allowed to hold on to anything. These are risks. At any minute, we have to be ready to run. It doesn't matter how far we've traveled or how well, oh, sorry, or how well we hide. The madman always knows where to find us. It's as if he has some supernatural tracking power. How does he do it? The police can't help us. No one can help us. It's time to run again, but this time it's different. I've broken the rules. I know this, but I don't know. I don't want to let her go. I want to stay here and live my life like a normal person. I can't take this anymore. He is the sole reason for all of this and he will never go away. The only way to end this is to make him stop. So that's what I'm going to do. Ooh, so good. (laughs) Thank you for reading that. That's a great blurb. So not that I haven't read it before, but. So those are those, those are my book blurbs. Thank you for reading that one. And I, just one more plug on my books before we move on to the next topic is through some of those author uh, meetings that we did with uh, that I did for a while with like Jamie Engel mm-hmm. and uh, Steve Altier and Scott Stevens and a bunch of those other authors that I've met and become friends with. We talked about log lines. Log lines are literally one or two sentences that describe your book that you have mm-hmm. to learn. So I'm going to read those too. So in the dark, the one I read with the deeper voice, very quick, but here's a log line for that one. Steve Lewis can't remember his family, yet the rest of his memory remains intact. Voices in the dark begin to haunt him. Oh, that's great. And that's it for that one. Okay. And then lies that bind. A teenage boy is stalked by a deranged criminal, while a middle-aged couple longing for children consider the unthinkable. That's great too. That's, That's it. That's awesome. I had fun doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Those uh those classes, um, you learned a lot from those. Those oh, I um, really have. Zoom meetings. And 
Don't you have something in the works with an author that we interviewed? Something in the works. Something with in the works. Something in the, this is where I repeat with the, things with the with the library thing. So, oh with yes, <laughs> Greg Prado. Yeah, I don't want to say too much about it hint. <laughs> because we are still in sort of the early stages of kind of mapping it out. But he mm-hmm. has a really really cool event planned. Yes, and he's invited me to become part of it. And I uh, I need to touch base with him and kind of see what we're doing with that because yeah. I, I'd love to continue to be part of it. But I, props to Greg for that one. And we'll yeah. t- I hate to be so secretive, but he's yeah. not. I don't think we're ready to talk about. I don't it remember yet. what episode that we interviewed Greg Prado on, but oh, I don't either. You got to look up, look, look it up on our website. Yeah, that was a good one. It wasn't that it. long yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, so a lot of people have been working out too. That's another thing people have been doing while they're staying at home just to switch topics here. Cause we were kind of talking about that before. That is. And watching the Apple keynote. <laughs> that, that's if that's your working out. Doing. One person was doing that. It was exciting. They talked about <laughs> iOS 14 coming to the iPhones. Yeah. The new iPad. I don't even know what that, which iOS are we on now? I don't 13. even know. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, the new iPad OS, the new Mac OS. And here's the thing. Here's a cool thing about this too in quarantine because watching the Apple keynote is so exciting for me that I took the day off to do it. So that was another day where mm-hmm. I, I did do some housework too. But but the cool thing is afterwards, I have these discussions with Angie kind of telling her about the whole thing. And the whole Apple keynote doubles as like a sleeping agent. So if... I tell her about it. She falls asleep. That's how it works. <laughs> That's how it works. It, it, make, it makes me very, um, you know, peaceful, well, I, I guess. Well, on that note, we better change subjects before you fall asleep during the interview <laughs> or during the interview, during the podcast here. Oh, uh, well, we did have um, very much fun kayaking. I think you put a little video together oh, of that, I did. didn't you? Yeah, I sure did. And yeah. that is a perfect segue, as if not planned. As for if us not planned. to take a very quick break, we're going to play that video that we uh, that I put together from uh, some of the GoPro footage. Yeah. It's very quick, but uh, for those of you that are watching the video here on YouTube or on our website, because this is not a Facebook Live, check this out. For those of you listening to the audio version of the podcast, hang tight, and we'll be right back either way. That was fun. I wish we were back yeah, out there right now. <laughs> I know. I love kayaking so much. <laughs> I do too. So guys, as we are on the back half of the show and we're working towards wrapping up here, we wanted to tell you how, if you are wondering how you can help with the virus, especially being cooped up at home, you know, we talk a lot normally about helping the community, helping local artists, local businesses, and local charities. And there are still ways, even at home, that you can help with the virus. And of course, that is to donate. You know, the Mm -hmm. virus is all over the news. And, you know, we need to be informed, but it's also sort of taking the focus off of some of those organizations that you might normally donate to. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that uh, I've read a few things about how some of these charities are struggling now because people would normally be in sort of the rhythm, I'm hanging off the screen here, yep. would would be in the rhythm of knowing that we always donate or we always go volunteer yeah. on Friday or whatever, and now they're kind of, they, they're drifting, so they need your help now really more than ever. Yeah, yeah, there's, um, and there's, you know, there's 
so many of those local ones, like you said, are suffering and they're trying to help. Yep. But just like you said, attention is taken away from them. Oh, yeah. So I mean, I know um, my focus has been off of that for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. And of course, anything you're donating towards is very much appreciated. So if you are do- donating towards something that is dealing with the virus, of course, that is very much appreciated. But there is something called Charity Navigator. Yep. Um, and they evaluate charities using like a number-based system. Um, and they have a running list of nonprofits working in the communities that are affected by the virus. Right. So that's a great, you know, resource to kind of look at as well. Um, those, you know, that's going to be like charities that are focused on like medical services, relief supply, nice. relief supplies and things like that. So they like help you find the yeah. right charity. And probably helping those on the front lines yes. that, you know, you know, maybe certain hospitals that are lacking in supplies, um, so yeah, that charity navigator is a, a great thing to check out. That's awesome. So yeah. I'll put a link in the description of the show notes to charity mm-hmm. navigator. There's also a website, <clears throat> excuse me, called global giving. Now this mm-hmm. is a crowdfunded community and they connect to nonprofits as well. They connect to donors, they connect to companies and they have set a, a goal of reaching $5 million in donations. The money that they receive goes towards, just like you just said, emergency medical workers, communities in need, providing medical supplies to hospitals, and helping to deliver essentials to families. So I will also put a link to the Global Giving website on there. And just like when we were part of the Megacon thing that we mm-hmm. did um Cybercon, sorry, it was a Cybercon. sort of a replacement yeah. for, but with the Hanging with Web show, those folks put that together. Um, and we were part of that show. And again, thank you guys for letting us be part of that. Um, Hanging with Web is uh, always great to be associated with them. But that was for the COVID 19 relief fund that mm-hmm. we talked about, that all those yeah. shows talked about through the Telethon weekend. I'll put a link to how you can donate directly to the COVID-19 relief fund as well, Mm -hmm. because we haven't really talked much about that since we were on the show. Yeah. Since we were on the, the, yeah, yeah. I keep saying the show, but I guess it was kind of a telethon. Yeah, it was. It was very much was a telethon, a very long telethon. It was actually really cool. It was. Um, Yeah. I mean, there's just, there's so many different ways to give. Some people maybe don't want to give like monetary donations, or, you know, they have some extra supplies or something. So if you want to give like toward um, medical supplies, I'm sure there's, you know, lots of places that will accept, you know, the certain type of mask that you have to wear. Yeah. I always forget the number. I should know this, but, you know, and 95, whatever it is. But um, there's also some place called Relief International. Yep. It's um, It operates in 16 countries, and it helps um, refugees, families that have been displaced from their homes. Um, and, you know, it's really helping in those areas where people have really been hit the hardest. Yeah. Do you think of more impoverished? Yes, we've been hit hard, right? But there's these countries, you know, impoverished com- country. I can't talk tonight. Impoverished countries, yeah. refugee camps that have really been hit hard. Sure. So the Relief International is helping in those areas. Those are um, much more fragile environments too than ours. I mean, it's yeah. like you said, it's hit us hard. But I mean, they they don't have the uh, medical supplies or the the infrastructure to even get away from it or to get help when they need it. A lot of those places. So. Yeah. And, um, and the virus has hit every oh, I know. country, I know. you know, it is, there's not any place that it hasn't gotten to. Yeah. And we can thank our travel and everything like that, because that's how viruses spread quickly. Indeed nowadays. it is. And I want to reiterate something because you just pointed out if you want to do it a different way, but where I, where I mentioned global giving the website that you can go to for that's, that's trying to raise the $5 million. Mm-hmm. That is specifically, if you just want to give money, if you just yeah. want to give money, which is I don't know that we normally say it this way, but of course all charities can always use money. But I think now more than ever where volunteering is out for most of these places, that is one of the biggest ways that you can still give and you can still help. Well, you know, usually um, charities love like other types of giving that you can do, especially you're volunteering your time um, and donating items. But the, the great thing about monetary gifts that you give is the fact that, that that charity knows specifically, specifically what people need. Yes. 
Um, so a lot of them are starting like Amazon wish list because yes. they know what the needs of the community that they're helping in is. Right. You know, is it, it they, maybe they have plenty of clothes. They don't need clothes. Right. You know what I mean? So they know, okay, we specifically need boys underwear size 4t to 5t you oh, know yeah. what i mean it's something sure. specific so that's the great thing about giving monetarily yeah and especially now with the amazon wish list and smile amazon where you yes. can choose the ch- your charity of choice yep. where you want your um a proceed of every dollar you spend goes to the charity of your choice yeah so make sure if you haven't done that that you select a charity and every time that you shop go through the Smile Amazon. Yeah, it's um, smile.amazon.com. Yeah. And I'll mm-hmm. put that in the show notes too because... I, I just thought of that. You know, what's funny is I toggle back and forth on that one between Bags of Hope, Central Florida, and Alex's Lemonade Stand. Well, now so, we got the Care Foundation. And now we too. got the Care Foundation. Oh, that was a cool <laughs> so interview, by get, the way. Yeah. So I'm so excited to go check that out. Like, I you am know too. how excited I get with like wildlife. I am. You know? I, oh, yeah. I know and I get. love what... They're just all about, I love their hands-on approach, even though I know that's not the norm of what we're supposed to teach people about wildlife, but it really made sense of why they're hands-on with their animals. These are animals that are never going back into the wild, and the best way for them them. to take care of them is to do that hands-on approach, so it makes vetting them easier, handling them easier when they need to relocate them or something like Mm -hmm. calm them down, whatever it may be, so... Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to go do that too. That's yeah. going to be really cool. And that, that when we get the opportunity to volunteer for them, I really would like to go do yeah. that too. Yeah. Um, as long as I don't have to go into any of the big cages or anything. Yeah. But, you know, I'm sort of half <laughs> you joking. You just look outside the cage at the beautiful animal that's I- inside of it. We talked yeah. a little bit about that. Obviously, you don't volunteer there and get to go straight in to do that. No. But we mentioned Bags of Hope. So I want to take a minute to plug Bags of Hope. That is one of our favorite local charities. Mm -hmm. They do so much for the community. They do so much for people that are displaced, as they Mm -hmm. say, that are uh, found themselves in a tough spot and need some financial assistance. Maybe they need some clothes. Maybe they need some food. And Bags of Hope, they have historically done this thing where they go out to these communities Mm -hmm. and they set up these tents and they, uh, they you have know, a community event, it, you know, it's where... like a barbecue. It's mm-hmm. really, really cool. And it's not, uh, they sit down with everybody sits down with everybody and it's like a yeah. family communal thing. The yeah. kids have games and books. They have a fresh produce stand. They set up. It's a, it's a very, very cool place. A yeah. Very and, cool it go- and it goes beyond just the, well, here, what are your necessities that you need? It's, um, it's a mentoring program yep. in place. They help place you, um, help placing, you know, helping find jobs, work on yep. resumes. There's all sorts of um, things that they're trying to help the community. So yep. love it so much. I do too. And as we are sort of wrapping up here yeah. and kind of going through the plugs, I wanted to mention the electrician that I talked a little bit about earlier. Yes. If you're looking for any electrical work to be done, please contact the electrical surgeon. Thank Arturo. you, electrical surgeon. Arturo <laughs> is great. And the number on screen there, 407-491-9879 for those of you that are listening to the podcast, or you can go to his brand new website at www.electricalsurgeon.com. And as we talked about Bags of Hope, also I wanted to switch back for a minute and remind you that you can go to episode two of the It's All Fine and Angie podcast Mm -hmm. to see an interview with Rhonda Santolin, who runs Bags of Hope. Or you can go to www.bohcfl.info to get more information That's on right. that. And as Angie mentioned, the Care Foundation, you can mm-hmm. go to the carefoundation.org yep. to get more information on that. Yes. And what I'm so excited about is um, a piece of furniture that I dropped off to Joellen, who is the owner of Shabby Joe's. Oh, I am excited about that too. Yes. I should have had a before and after picture ready of that. We'll do it next week. We there will we have go. to. Well, she's going to be on the show July 7th. So That'd sh- be, let's save it for that. That'd yeah, be great. Yeah. So, um, so Joellen has started her own little business. She's the mama of three children. And she does like distressed furniture, but she also makes furniture or ref, um, refinishes pieces. Wow. And so we sent her a picture of what we wanted yep. and took the piece to her and it will be done on Sunday. So we're super excited. Oh, to go I am pick so excited. It, up. it is a, it is an old yes. school. What is that called? Hoiser. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's to like me, a little. It looks like an old kitchen counter yeah, from like the 30s or 20s. They used to do their 20s. cooking and bread making and everything. Yeah. On there it was like their little pantry and yeah. cooking area. And um, so we're making a little coffee bar out of it. Well, yeah. um, 
Joe we, is we, doing we that for us. We are making a coffee bar yes. out of it. Yeah. But um, Shabby Joe's, I think we'll have a picture up on the screen. You can find her at Shabby Joe's on Facebook or give her a shout at 321-228-2928. And we will be working with um, Shabby Joe and the Old Red Barn of Geneva for an upcoming fundraiser in July, which we will keep you guys posted on that. That's right. And one final plug, speaking of fundraisers, if you want to raise funds for me directly, you can (laughs) buy one of my books, as we spoke about a little bit earlier. Angie read the uh, Help to Read One of the Blurbs. But again, I write under my full name. That's Daniel Fox. You can go to danielfoxbooks.com to buy either Lies That Bind, which is my latest novel, or In the Dark, which is my first novel. They are all available there in print, and you can get an autographed copy if you order directly from me. I'll even sign it directly to you with a personalized message. But you can also order it through my website or directly from Amazon.com. It's also Mm -hmm. available. Uh, In the Dark is available on Audible. I'm working on an Audible version or an audio version of Lies That Bind. You can get either of them from iBooks, from Apple, on the Amazon Kindle, Barnes & Noble in print, or Barnes & Noble for your Barnes & Noble nook. So Pretty you much can, everywhere. You can watch them on any <laughs> I watch. You can read them. I, I always think of it like a movie when you're reading a book, <laughs> but you can read them on the paper book, on your e-reader, like your Kindle, or your nook, or on your phone, or on your iPad, or whatever you want to do. All so, right. Anyway, that wraps up that the is. show this time. And I keep saying tonight, but really you guys are all going to hear this on Thursday yeah. like our normal podcast. So, yes. Yeah, so thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget to give us a rating. And if you would like to, a review would be wonderful. And make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you know when we will have a new show available, which is usually every Thursday. Not usually. It is every Thursday. And then keep an eye out on our social media under Fine and Dangy so that you know when we will be having some more Facebook Lives. That's right. So we'll have some more of those coming up. You can catch us on all the major platforms on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, YouTube, and many more. And I think that wraps the show that for is, guys. today. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for listening to us this evening. Hope you're staying safe and healthy. And remember, at the end of each and every day, it's, it's all, all fine and dandy. And dandy.